and welcome to the Pro Photographer Cheap Camera Challenge where we find a professional photographer and give them the cheapest, worst camera we can find. Hopefully they'll take some nice photos with it. This time round we're in London with photographer Sean Tucker. Sean is a fellow Brit who spent his formative years in South Africa. He's a former priest turned photographer and while his Instagram focuses more on his street work, he's passionate about portraits and has a popular YouTube channel dedicated to the philosophical side of photography. Firstly, what do you what do you use? What's your kit? Do you want to see? It's kind of two, really. And this is probably the one I use more often is my Sony A7 III. Mm -hmm. And the lens on it is just like a little Samyang 35mm 2.8 plastic price. The street for me is all 35, except I've just got the Ricoh GR2. It's like a 28mm equivalent. But it's basically a point and shoot. It's really tiny. Yeah, it's a compact. But it's perfect for street because no one really knows what you're doing or cares. I think we've got something that um, is even more incognito. You know, you've moved around from brand to brand, right? So you don't really care what brand of camera you use. This is going to be such a test now because I'm, I'm big on my channel about like, oh no, it doesn't matter what camera you use. And I always like, but just get the right tool for the job. So this is going to like not be the right tool for the job I'm getting. I'm pretty thing. sure it is. You'll be right at home with this. Oh, that's it's got amazing. A, it's got a zoom. Yeah. You know, it's got the Nikon, yeah. you know, the Nikon bulge. I know you like black, which is why you've got a pink and yellow camera. It suits me <laughs> down to the ground. This is this is what I'm like on the inside. You, you said you're a bit of a control freak. I, I'm such a control freak. So yes. we decided <laughs> that, you know, the best option for you is probably just to take, to take control. out the control. It doesn't have many options. It has two options only, date and time and format. <laughs> so oh, and up and down. Up, up and down, down. Very and there's up and down. This is how much of a control freak I am. I'm actually going to clean the lens. Got, do, you, do you want me to get the little um, the, oh, the, the squeeze? Oh, if you yeah. Yeah. Are you Should serious? Do a quick centre cleaning as well. Oh Micro seven eighths. Wait, wait, why don't I just clean your little? Please, thank your, your, you, thank you, and all the little bits as well. Do you need a, a spray? Ooh. Oh, oh, oh shit! Oh, too... oh shit! It's not. It's not waterproof. Hold on. Yeah. What if it's not? Because <laughs> it's not, isn't it? Let's be honest. <laughs> Beautiful. There you go, so that's really cute. Yeah. Look at that. Do you want a cotton bud to? Let's do it. Just because we can. <laughs> just because we can. I want to give myself gonna... the best shots possible. <laughs> I'm getting an award-winning shot. I don't think shot I have any this. more crap in here to give you. Preparing for war, man. I don't think you would be a very good um, like war photographer. No. <laughs> it's all dirty. <laughs> I'm going back to the hotel. Can you guys do it again? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I missed it. It's ready. It's definitely ready. I can feel it. <laughs> Shall we give it a spin? Let's do it. Yeah. We met up with Sean nearby St Paul's in central London, but instead of hitting the streets, we're faffing about under the bridge. Not quite sure what he's photographing, to be honest. Some pigeons? A lot of street photographers would say what I do is not street photography, I've, right. I've had people tell me. Street photography I think traditionally is more about shooting subjects or individuals. I don't really, I don't really do that. I kind of look for interesting light. And the subject is kind of incidental. They're usually in shadow, it's often their back, and it's just for a sense of scale. Unfortunately, a cheap camera is acting up already. Oh grief, it's only taken three shots. Really? I've taken a lot more than that. Oh, okay, okay, so head out, head out. No, 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 oh, okay. it's fine. They're, there. They're just out of order. Because, you know, why would it be in order? <laughs> what a weird thing that would be. We've actually come out during lunchtime, when the sun's at its strongest. Obviously, Sean finds Golden Hour boring. You said that you like going to, um, you know, Soho, the city. Do you just go Sound to the same spots good. all the time? I'm always looking for, uh, like, tall buildings. Right. So something that shapes light a little bit. I'm not a fan of kind of flat light. So either with, like, um, like hard lines or edges from tall buildings that create shadows or like we've got in here you can see all over the place there's like light reflecting off glass and steel pool of light pool of light pool of light so uh, like days like today where it's it's very bright and sunny are actually my favorite and they, they never used to be. that's contrary to what most people are taught when they're yeah. starting to get into photography people tell them to you know shoot during golden hour yeah but you want that harsh light yeah that for his street stuff, Sean usually comes out two, three times a week, getting 50 to 100 shots over a two hour period each time, from which he'll walk away with one or two keepers. So compared to all of the places you've lived in and, and worked in before, how does London rank for street photography? It's top of the pile for me. You'll never run out of stuff to shoot in London. And I love this kind of thing. You've got like a, a really old building, like who knows how, it could be a thousand years old, you just don't know, next to something steel and glass right next to each other. So not just like light and shadow, but old and new. Right. The light here has a quality as well. It's, it's, it's softer somehow. Even on a summer day, right. it's not quite as fierce as other places in the world. Cape Town, when I used to shoot, it was very bright, harsh, 
almost like a blue quality to the light. And here, even on a sunny day, it feels quite muted and held back. How do you pick out what to shoot? Light. Because, I mean, there's loads interesting here visually, but it's also a bit of a visual mess. Yeah. Here, there's, there's nothing. It's sort of in shade, it's quite dark, there's nothing that interesting. There's light reflected over there, I can see. It's almost like a moth, you know, you're just drawn to <laughs> interesting bits of light. Speaking of which, it's almost like a bat signal for Sean. I kind of like a really nice clean frame, uh -huh. something that's a bit minimalist. If I was on, um, I don't want it to hear, if, if I was on a proper camera, like I'd just dial it down, everything around the light would just crunch right back down to black. I think the zoom quite, lens quite went back in a little bit when you said that. Oh, sorry. Like, Give it a little compliment. Wah, 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 wah. Give it a little compliment. So you know when photography first came out, people were saying, you know, photography is not art, but I guess what you're doing is it sounds really douchey to say painting with light and shadow. Oh, watch out, this guy's awesome. I mean, it, you, you could say douchey, but you could also say, like, um, it's... Oh, it's just too <laughs> slow, man. It's just way too slow. It is what it is, though, isn't it? I mean, that's, like, photography is that. You know, light and shadow together gives you an image. I get criticised a lot that, you know, what I do is a street photography, but my criticism of, like, traditional street photographers is they're the opposite end where they're so subject focused they're not paying as much attention to the light. If you can bring everything together in one, like that's where I think photography sings. Instead of looking for interesting subjects, Sean will often squat in the middle of the street and photograph what, at first glance, appears to be nothing at all. It's weird the way you think. You kind of see yeah. things a bit differently, like you're in the matrix with the ones and zeros. Yeah, that's true actually, and I think that's, that's a big jump you make with photography is when you learn to see how the camera sees with its limitations. That might not look interesting to my eye, but I know it will look interesting to the camera if I expose it right, which I can't. <laughs> less is more. Yeah, exactly. You have yeah. so much less with this, yeah, so you're exactly. going to get so much more. Bicycle. Thank you. Oh, no. I feel a little bit like a backseat driver. I'm, I'm watching Sean's um, LCD screen, and I see, I, kinda, I see the feet coming in. I see it coming into the frame. I'm like, yes, go on, you're going to get it. And then like half a, half a second I've later. Got to, I've got to anticipate for about like three it's seconds. It's like watching penalty shootouts, yeah. except every single time you miss. Yes. <laughs> I don't put pressure on myself to get a photo every time I go out and shoot. I know that I'll learn something if I go out and shoot, whether I get final shots to post you know, on Instagram or even on a portfolio one day. If I come back with none of that stuff, I probably still learn something. Like there's something interesting in this with these lines, but right. I mean, there's no shot here now. There's no subject. I mean, if, if there was somebody sitting there having lunch, I'll take that shot to take it home and look at it because I'll remember this this time of day. And maybe I'll walk back past next time I come and see if there's something here. Whenever Sean's out doing street photography, 90% of what he shoots is for his scrapbook. He likes to play around with ideas and see what sticks. So I notice you don't really get in people's face, you're more of a voyeur. <laughs> it's just like a sniper with a long lens. I'm not trying to get a specific person's photograph, so if I get confronted, I can very honestly say, I'm shooting the space, the light's beautiful in there. If you didn't get the shot, would you wrap around and do it again, like you're no. on a roundabout? It's the other thing though, I'm super aware of like the fact that I'm a guy. Like, right. I, I, like I'm not going to loop around to take photographs of women multiple right. times. I just yeah. don't want to be seen as a creepy dude. So. I guess it's also physically and mentally tiring to always be basically cold calling people yeah. when, you're, when you're taking photos of them. I think for an introvert, and people don't talk about that, it's, it's a hard, it's a draining thing to do. And I think extroverts don't understand that. They go, well, like, why, why do you take it seriously? Who cares what other people think? Yeah. Introverts do care. Everybody cares. Exactly. You go, go have a cry in a, a big tub of ice cream like, to get through it. But that's just how you're wired, you know? Yeah. And you don't, you need to push yourself beyond your comfort zone. I absolutely agree. But you also need to listen to what drains you and what feeds you. Yeah, true. Because that might be where your style needs to be. So, like, this is where I'm a coward. So, there's a guy sitting in a car just opposite here and you can see the like the stripes on the wall yeah. and you can see the reflections on the car making really interesting shapes so if this guy wasn't in the car I would go stand right there and have people walk past right. and he wouldn't even be in the shot right. but I have to explain why I'm photographing his car with a pink camera <laughs> and I don't have a good answer Sean's not afraid of missing an interesting subject after all in London there are a dime a dozen I mean, in this situation, because you're not photographing him, you're photographing the flowers. Exactly. If you actually come up to him and be like, hey, um, flowers are beautiful, can, I, can you just hold it for a bit longer and I'll, I'll take a photo of that? I mean, no, not, not for me though. If I'm going to stop you and ask you, I want a proper portrait now. Right. Right. 
more people would know me for street photography yes, just because of Instagram, but portraits are a first let for me. Modeling for us are Amy Bevan and Amro Mahmoud, two young actors who've come to get their headshots taken. Are you able to cry with one eye and like keep the other one dry? <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, it's a serious question, man. For Sean, photography wasn't always this glamorous. Before doing portraits, he spent several years photographing all sorts of things, like sofas, something he described as soul-destroying. So what makes photographing sofas so difficult? Because <laughs> <laughs> they seem kind of boring, man. Think about a big sofa. So like, I'm not going to throw a speed light on it. I'm not even going to throw a decent sized soft onyx on it. I need something bigger than that to give a nice soft pleasing light. Right. And you th everyone, when you say sofa, thinks about a nice fabric sofa. What if I give you a black leather sofa with chrome legs? Mm. I remember when I was shooting kitchen products, that, that my nightmare was the KitchenAid mixer, like which lots of people have in their home because yeah. It's a chrome, like a stainless steel oh, bowl. Yeah, 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 so yeah. if I'm shooting that thing, that bowl is reflecting the whole room. You're photographing a funhouse mirror, but you don't want to see anything in the mirror. So in a way, doing portrait photography is miles easier. Yes, than product photography. technically miles easier. Right. People-wise, obviously way more difficult, yeah. but it's a challenge I like. I mean, I, before I went off and worked for the church, I studied psychology. You come in for a headshot, you come out with a psychiatrist. A lot of <laughs> sessions have turned into therapy <laughs> sessions. I guess you'll have to get the reflection out of yeah. you guys' tears this time. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, just loosen your shoulders, yeah. Have you ever been shot with a camera like this? Not like this before. <laughs> you're just going to mirror me, okay? So, you're going to just turn slightly to the side like this. You're going to lean on your front yeah, leg. You're already in it. That's good. You're ready to go. Yeah, cool. That's great. Lovely. You're pretty much non-stop bantering. Almost like you're trying to mesmerize your subject so that they just kind of stop thinking and they're like, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Everybody at the start starts held back. Even models, you'll find a little bit of reticence right at the start. That's totally normal. I'll do little things like, you know, get their favorite playlist on Spotify, make sure that's playing to kind of relax them. The more they start talking about things they love, I find that as the shoot goes on, they start to open up more and you start to get really interesting shots. Did you do animal studies when you were studying? Yes. What was your animal? An elephant. Was it? <laughs> yeah. So it's just a case of loosening people up and getting them out of their shell and then looking for not even necessarily what they want to portray to you and give you, but you want to almost find the chink in the armor, like the moment where they're most themselves. Oh no, there's no way to expose it. <laughs> Here are my camera excuses, are you ready? <laughs> Unfortunately, there is no way to change the exposure on this. Excuses, excuses. Because I'm using a dark background, it thinks I want way more light than this and I can't turn it down. Um, I'm gonna try. It's not the camera, Sean. Isn't it? Are you yeah, sure? It's never the camera. I'll try to put this light on the background a little oh, bit. That might work. Yeah, it's just I never shoot on a white background. I find it quite dull. Yeah, you see, that will work. Uh, I always feel like the human eye is drawn to either the areas of highest contrast in an image, the most saturated colors, or the brightest value. You'll find if people go for a headshot in a white t-shirt, you spend lots of time looking at the t-shirt. So I like to sort of have a darker background and make the brightest thing in the image is the person coming out the frame. Yeah. All right, cool. I think that's great. Should we switch out? Cool. Good stuff. Next up is Amro, who's going for a moodier look. Let's see if we can get some side lighting going on. Usually, most women kind of respond to slightly more overhead, highlighting the T-zone, sucking in cheeks, and that sort of more beauty lighting. But I think guys respond to a bit more mood, so I'm gonna bring it round to like, this is now like a more traditional Rembrandt light. You'd see it more in an action movie. You're not gonna see this in a rom-com as much, because, <laughs> so I'm also feeling out. Just mooding the yeah, yeah, yeah. Not to say, not to say you're not like a, a rom-com leading man, like you could be, but like, but I'm also trying to feel out kind of what vibe the person has. That's lovely, really good. So just, uh, my hand here, you're just gonna tilt your head a touch. That's perfect, right? Now. Just soften the eyes just slightly for me. Three, two, one. At two, three hundred quid an hour, headshot sessions can be pretty expensive. But for actors, a good headshot can make all the difference. And casting directors see your face and they're like, I like you, yeah. I don't like you. It's like real life Tinder, yes or no? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, and it's often seconds, isn't it? Yeah, so getting right. a shot that makes them at least stop for a second, flip over and read your yeah, bio yeah. is everything. For Sean, photography is more than a technical exercise. It's a spiritual practice. Focusing on taking photos helps him clear his mind. And walking around with Sean, I've discovered parts of London I've never noticed before. Only we've been out for so long that the dreaded golden hour is now upon us. Now that the uh, light's a lot more flatter and we've uh, unmiked, Sean's actually started 
taking photographs of people. And you were saying earlier actually that it was because the lights not strong enough, right? So you're actually having to make do with looking at your subjects. But you can't say anything because he's unmiked. What he said. Which just goes to show you should never say we're done with the day until you're done with the day. <laughs> As a self-confessed introvert, Sean often photographs anonymous, solitary figures. He says that, in a way, they're reflections of himself and the space he inhabits inside the city. London's a mixed bag for me. I mean, while I know I'm very lucky to live here and street photography opportunities and the variety of stuff you get are amazing, there's a, there's a part of London I really struggle with. The pub culture here, that's how you socialise. You go to a loud pub, you stand on the street yelling at each other and you get into a fight. That is totally not my personality. In the back of my mind, I'm, I'm thinking maybe it's time, maybe it's time to leave. You got into photography actually pretty late, didn't you? I think I just turned 30, actually, yeah. My 20s, back in Africa, I was working as a priest, pastor, whatever right. you want to call it, and they didn't pay extremely well. So I had to do something on the side to kind of bring in a bit of extra money. It started with video work, actually. I mean, any job I could pick up, really. 2008, there were some very serious xenophobic attacks in South Africa. Um, people would come in from, you know, Zimbabwe, Mozambique, Angola, to come and get jobs in South Africa and local people felt they were losing out on jobs. And so in the, in the local townships, they started to attack people and kill people. And there was literal bloodshed on the streets. So I said to the church, we need to get in right now with a bus and get people out as quick as possible. And they turned around and said, no, 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 you know, the Lord has given us the bus and we need to be good stewards of it and take care of it. It might get damaged. And so a couple of us stole the bus and we went down and we, we took people out all day. It was kind of then I lost my rag and just started saying, we, we are totally off the map with what's important. And the last church I worked in spent money to put spikes into the ground outside the doors so no one could sleep there, homeless people couldn't sleep oh, wow. there. So I started talking about this stuff and uh, I was told, you need to stop that or you're out. And I'm like, well, I'm, I'm out, aren't I? I'd sunk 10 years into a career which I now couldn't do anymore and didn't want to do anymore. And that's when I sort of went, well, I'm already doing photography and video and really enjoying it. Maybe I could make that a career. So I tried to freelance. But I wasn't that good, to be honest. I mean, I, I shouldn't have expected that work would have flowed in because I had a lot to learn still. Um, so for a good three years there, I, I waited tables at a restaurant that was down the around the corner from the church I used to work at. So I had people coming in and being like, Father, more cappuccino. Exactly, yeah, you know, coffee. And then I'd bring coffee and then have to get out of their way. Yeah. And I was used to, you know, standing on a stage and talking to people. You know, they'd listen. Now I had to get out of their way to not interrupt the conversation. It was a really kind of a real knock to the ego. But it was a good way to start. It put the ego far away and like, let me sort of focus on how do I just, from scratch, make this work as a job. Even though Sean left the clergy years ago, he still makes it a habit to pop into the local church whenever he goes somewhere new. There's something very calming about this kind of space. If you notice how you're talking quiet straight away, <laughs> start whispering. Well, yeah, I mean, it's... It does it to you, doesn't it? I can't exactly be talking like, what's up, yeah, guys? Yeah. We're in the church in Chingford. Yeah, exactly. Pick up E14. I mean, E4. Q swishy B-roll. <laughs> it's very easy to come in and be overwhelmed by the whole grandeur mm -hmm. of everything. Get your widest lens possible. Yeah. I've got a friend who literally does it. He goes and sets the tripod up in the middle of the aisle, right. and he shoots huge wide shots, one, and then right overhead, all the way back, right. and creates these long stitches, because they are... As spaces, they're amazing. They're meant to sort of shut you up and sit yeah. you down. They don't just fill it with huge windows. They'll create narrow windows that create shafts of light. And then you've got columns and lots of churches and vaulted ceiling. Incense exactly. and stuff. Exactly. Yeah. You've got the incense and you've got candles burning. That's yeah. creating a, a haze that catches that light in really interesting ways. So I, I love shooting in old churches. Like just to capture those, those little details where light's playing is, is really cool. Unfortunately, aside from the altar, there's not much light falling elsewhere in this church. For his street stuff, Sean never deliberately sets up his subject, but given his history with the church, I want to challenge him to photograph himself in this environment. 
Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna sit in that last chair over there. Okay. So I reckon frame me something like something like that. Here at the moment, it's blowing out the highlights. So take a few and then just sort of tilt it like that. Can you see the difference? Yeah. Well, you know who can't do the cheap camera challenge is this guy. <laughs> <laughs> um, let me just see what the light's doing here. Uh, where are we? Yeah, this is better, I think. I tell you what, the Jeep camera challenge is a lot harder than I thought. I can barely see what's going on on the screen. All right, I've got like a million. Nice. I quite like it. It's good. I feel a bit nervous standing next to the Sean Tucker oh, taking, gosh, taking photos of him. Please. Nailed it. Do you want a job? <laughs> <laughs> you have to use this, though. I mean, I, oh, no. I'm your second it. shooter with this. Well, you'll definitely have to pay me then. <laughs> okay. I don't know what to do in churches. Mm -hmm. I've already broken a bunch of rules. <laughs> <laughs> probably. Probably. Yeah. You probably shouldn't have been sat up there. Oh, definitely. Not. I'm going to hell. <laughs> it's all right. Yeah. You, you, you knew that was going to be the case when you left. <laughs> Sean is one of the most humble and resilient people I've ever met. From Britain to South Africa, priest to waiter, he's had to reset his life so many times. Instead of being beaten down by the crosses he's had to bear, he's incorporated the lessons he's learned in life into his photography. He's a master of seeing things from a different perspective. And yet, He's always striving to become a better photographer because he, of all people, knows you have to work for it. On a scale of one to ten, with one being awesome and ten being just extremely awesome, with like five E's. I mean, I have to say it's, it's awesome. It's awesome. It's, it's awesome. We'll, we'll give it a one. We'll, we'll give it a give solid it a one. one. I do talk a bit on my channel about it doesn't matter what camera you use. Yeah. It obviously does to a point because you still have to have a decent tool in your hand. But I mean, you know, I got some stuff out of it which I, I don't want to vomit all over. <laughs> and it got me shooting more intuitively because I can't control anything. The only thing I can do is to press the button to take the photograph. Right, Sometimes right. I think being a technical photographer stops you from taking better shots because if you can't take it perfectly, you won't take it. Maybe that's a valuable exercise. You know, I can be too perfectionist about the stuff I shoot. Right. But shooting with this, you couldn't. So it kind of got me thinking slightly differently. Takes the pressure off getting a great shot. Yeah, yeah, because it's, it's impossible. Yeah, exactly. Exactly, yeah. So I guess, yeah, yeah obviously you probably don't want this back because you're no, having so much fun with that one. No, I'd like it back because we miss each other. All right, fine. Thank you. But, and you know, I've always thought Sony have terrible ergonomics, but this yeah. feels great. That one feels <laughs> really good. Sean yeah. did mention that he was going to probably put that on a uh, plaque somewhere in his house. If I can keep this, this is going on my mantelpiece, yeah, definitely. I survived the cheap camera challenge. Just. And all I got was a crap camera. <laughs>